Hi and welcome to Review Geek Refers and you are here for one reason only and that is to eat, sleep, game, repeat, to watch exclusive content. So please share, like, scroll, smash that notification bell and as always on this channel, stay awesome! So yes guys, welcome back and this is another review on this channel. So yes guys, follow us on Instagram at the Geeky Collections, follow us on Twitter, rgeek3000, and follow us on YouTube at ReviewGeek3000. You can contact us on all those social media accounts, and we will do our best to get back to you and speak with you. Again, guys, you can subscribe to all those social media accounts, and as always, on this channel, if you like what we do on this channel and you, you enjoy our content, then please support and subscribe to the channel. Again, guys, we have a schedule. We do the Contenders Corner for the weekly WWE Raw and SmackDown episodes. We do the WWE pay-per-views. We do AEW Dynamite and their pay-per-views. Plus, we do the monthly subscription boxes, and that consists of the Walking Dead Slow Drop, Loot Crate, Zedbox, Click crates, super loot, zanini box, and many more. We also do the film parade, and we've just dropped a film parade on this channel, and that was Beverly Hills Cop Review. And you can check that out on our YouTube channel at Review Geek 3000. Again, guys, we do weekly gaming streams on this channel, and again, through shocking a turn of events, we had to postpone some of our content for the past 10, 9 days as again I had to mourn a loss of my pet again guys it's sad to see her go but she's in a better place now but again guys we are back 2021 we are back and we're going to get a lot of content done there's a lot of content on the drawing board that we're going to do and we are going to get this under the wraps on the weeks to come but again guys this is AEW's 2020 year in review so just guys lockdown the coronavirus has been a piss drain of a year but again it is what it is and again guys stay safe do what we got to do and if we listen to the rules and what regulations and what what not we can get this under the wraps and the quicker people listen and adhere to common sense then the better things will be in the long run again guys uh, we wish you luck for the new year to come and uh, again guys stay safe and only travel necessary but again guys let's get back to this which is what we do on this channel anyway and this is AEW's year in review guys and if you're a massive fan of AEW then please support our channel we love all elite wrestling we love wrestling we're a massive fan of wrestling guys and uh, the more wrestling we do on this channel the better it is for all those wrestling fans. And again, guys, uh, you know, WWE have been draining the past few years. But what they've done recently with Bray Wyatt and this thing going on with Jey Uso, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns is interesting. It's been better. And the production-wise has been better than the last couple of months than it has been in years but then guys the it's interesting what WWE have, have done lately and we'll see how it goes to play but anyway guys this, this is AEW this is all elite wrestling so let's forget WWE in this video but anyway guys this is AEW's 
year in review. And they had a massive year. They had Revolution, they had Double or Nothing, they had All Out, they had Full Gear, Winter is Coming, and then the big John Huber tribute show to pay tribute to his life. And yes, guys, let's get this going. And we're going to start off with Revolution. So yes, guys, Revolution started off 29th of February, 2020. And again, guys, it delivered its first pay-per-view of the decade, Saturday night in Chicago with Revolution. A show months in the making and headlined by the world champion, Chris Jericho, as he faces John Moxley on the night. Elsewhere on the card, friends competed for the rights to hold the AEW Tag Team Championships as Kenny Omega and Hangman Page defended against the Young Bucks. Cody faced MJF and an intensely personal grudge match to round out the top of the lineup. What went down in those matches and others that populated that spectacular. But anyway, guys, here we go. We had the boy in. SCU versus the Dark Order. After weeks of recruiting Championship Daniels to join them, the Dark Orders, Stu Grayson and Evil Uno battled Daniels' teammates. But anyway, guys, we had that. We had. And the Dark Order defeated SCU on the night. Then we had Dustin Rhodes versus Jake Hager. And Hager came out on top and defeated Rhodes via referee stoppage. We then had Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara. And Darby Allen defeated Sammy Guevara. And again, guys, this was a grade A match. And Allen and Guevara will be warning, warring for many, many years in AEW. This was a hell of a match. Both men maximised their minutes and told the story they intended to tell. And this resilient, tenacious Allen overcome the early damage to pick up the win. The crowd response and the commentary both indicate that Allen is the next big thing in AEW. And yes, guys, are we going to see? Are we going to see? In this year to come, are we going to see Sting versus Darby Allen, or are we going to see Darby Allen and the Sting collide together and become tag team champions this year? But anyway, guys, you know, we also had on Revolution AEW tag team title match Kenny Omega and Hagman Page versus the Young Bucks. And again, guys, another intense match. And this was an A plus match. This was a grade A match. And on this channel, guys, we would have graded this match. A plus four, a four point five out of five here. But again, what a match in this in its still early. But this was a legitimate match of the year, candidate for extraordinary action, spectacular storytelling, and some deep character work from Matt Jackson and Page in particular. The fans were into every second of the thirty minute match, biting on every near four, and that is a testament to the strength. Of the performers involved. From teasing Page's heel. Turn to twisting the narrative. And hinting at more aggressive. Nastier side of the books. This took fans on an emotional roller coaster That paid off months of becoming. Of booking. And wrote a new chapter. In the total reign of Hangman. And Kenny Omega. Then we had. AEW Women's Championship match. Chris St Statlander versus Nyla Rose. And this was a grade B match here. And we would have done we would have graded this probably a three. Uh, a three a three plus guys, a three point five out of five. And the early moments of of this one were ugly, a tad disjointed, and struggled to get over with the audience and the hellacious match that preceded it. With that said, Rose and Statlander overcame the early issues and delivered a hard-fought, hard-hitting match that would have been infinitely better 
with a story the audience could sink its teeth into. And again, guys, another good match there. And then we had Cody versus Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And this was a B-plus match. Another four... Another four grade match here, and for a match that had a ho as hot as build as any of the card, and one with many emotions rolled into it, the Chicago's crowd reaction to it was somewhat disappointing. With that said, the spots later in the match finally generated that type of response you would expect from a match of this magnitude. The lashing with the white belt, the cowardice from the M MJF, the face spitting and the finish all generate the type of reaction you would hope for. And again guys, another cut sinking, another ground shaking match there. Then we had Orange Cassidy versus Pac. And again guys, Pac defeated Cassidy and this was another grade A match that we, the Contenders Corner, would have graded this a four plus guys a four a four out of five and this was the most pleasant surprise on wrestling pay-per-view in a long time yes pack is excellent and cassidy's uber over but the story they told had the fans hanging on every spot in a way they did not for cody versus mjf just minutes prior. The underdog story of the charismatic slacker captivated them and Pac's willingness to sell the for Cassidy made the match that much better. And again guys, another great match and then we had the main event and this was for the AEW World Championship John Moxley versus Chris Jericho. Yes guys, the, the champion Faces off John Moxley. And Moxley defeated Jericho to win the AEW World Championship. And another great match here, guys. And we would have rated this a 4 plus, guys. Probably a 4.5 out of 5 here. And Moxley revealing that he could see the entire time was a great spot. The crowd reacted exactly as you would have hoped. And the finish was every bit as red hot as you would hope for from the main event of an extraordinary pay-per-view. The match that preceded the finish was very good, told a great story and presented Moxley as the unflinching badass that could absorb an amount of punishment and continue fighting. A bloodied, triumphant rebel, he is the perfect representative for a company looking to be exactly that in today's wrestling landscape. On a night of dramatic near falls and stunning athleticism, this was a throwback to the days of Steve Austin overcoming the interference of Mr. McMahon's corporation in a world, in a wild attitude era brawl to win the title. It was great bit of business to paraphrase Jim Ross. And again, guys, what a fantastic evening that was. And again, if you want to see draw dropping action here, guys, revolution, revolution, 20, the February 29th, of 2020 was an amazing pay-per-view that AEW brought to our screens, guys. And you know what, guys? I'll, I'll, I'll give it to those wrestlers. That was an absolutely smashing, electrifying pay-per-view in 2020. And then... It's over to Double or Nothing and All Elite Wrestling. Tony Khan brings us Double or Nothing. The biggest night of All Elite Wrestling's year arrived Saturday at Daly's Place. May 23rd, 2020, in Jacksonville, Florida, with Double or Nothing, the year, the one-year anniversary of the revolutionary company's inception, and an event headlined by two high-profile, high-stake matches. These bouts top stat card that also featured TNT Championship Tournament Final. Cody versus the Murder Hawk Monster Lance Archer 
AEW's Women's Championship match, Hikaru Shida versus Nora Rose, Casino Ladder match, Darby Allen versus Joey Janela, versus Orange Cassidy versus Colt Cabana versus Luchasaurus versus Scorpio, Scorpio Sky versus Frankie Kazarian versus Kip Sabian versus Mystery Entrant. We also had Dustin Rhodes versus the Chairman Sean Spears, Chris Stantlander versus Penelope Ford, and Jungle Boy versus MJF, which is in the list of all Elite's wrestling best matches of the year. But again, guys, we'll draw that back after we reviewed all the pay per views of AEW. We will list their top matches this year from 10 to number 1 of the best. But we start off the number 1 contenders match. Private Party versus the Best Friends. And it was Best Friends defeated Private Party. And this was a 3.5 out of 5 match. Best Friends winning was the right choice. As the past 2 months of television had been dedicated to the team. Building momentum and clawing its way into contention. Beating a team like Private Party was the puts the exclamation point on their push and sets up Taylor and Trent for the big title opportunity. And again, guys, what a match that was. And then we head over to the casino ladder match. And this one was a fiery, fiery match. And it was Cage who defeated Janela, Sky Kazarian, Allen, Luchasaurus, Sabian, Cassidy and Cabana. And again, guys, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. Above all else, chaos is expected from a spectacular of a match like this. The casino ladder match delivered that in spades. While the high spots and creative creativity alone would be more than enough to earn it an above average grade. The stories involved throughout elevated it to another level. From Sabian, Havoc and Ford trying to steal the win to Cassidy's early laziness to the introduction of Cage and Taz's revenge on Allen. Perceived disrespect, this was loaded with numerous stories to keep fans invested. And again guys, what a match it was indeed. Then we had Jungle Boy versus MJF. And this was a 4 out of 5 match and MJF defeated Jungle Boy. This was just a superbly wrestled match. Every spot meant something. The psychologically, the psychology was on point, and the efforts of both men enhanced the meaning of the match. MJF targeting the arm while looking for the salt of the earth's finisher was smart, as was the finish, which proved the cerebral young competitor could adjust and adapt to the flow of the match. <laughs> And again, guys, he wrestled it perfectly. But the victory of MJF just narrowed the win here. And again, we head over to the TNT Championship match. Cody versus Lanch Archer. And this match was presented by Iron Mike Tyson. And again, Cody defeated Archer to win the title. And this, I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of, out of 5. Archer was presented as a dim, dominant force throughout the match, kicking out of everything thrown at him by the American Nightmare. He looked every bit the destroyer he had been booked as to this point. Perhaps that is why it was such a curious booking decision to have him fall apart the minutes Roberts disappointed from ringside, disappeared from ringside. It's not as if Archer has never competed without Roberts before. He has achieved success in both TNA Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling without the snake and he dominated the action without needing Roberts to interfere on his behalf. That bit of the booking hurt the overall quality of the match but again it was a great match. We then had Chris Statlander versus Penelope Ford and despite a back in injury suffered in the casino ladder match early in the night Penelope Ford seized control of her match with Chris Statlander early and worked her over with a number of kick based strikes and again guys this match was won by Statlander who defeated Penelope Ford and this was I'd say a 3 out of 5 Ford looked like a star here 
Is she the polished performer others of the, the roster are? No, but she has the star aura and turned in a best showing to date. Again, goes a good match, but it wasn't the best. Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears. And it was Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, who defeated Spears. And this again, goes. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. There was nothing to this one other than some quality comedy spots and the heel getting his comeuppance. Sometimes that is all that is necessary and it was a great match. Then we have the no disqualification match for the AEW women's title, Hikaru Shida versus Nida Rose. And I'm going to give this, and this result here, Shida defeated Rose, and this was a 4 out of 5. The no DQ stipulation was key to the success of this match as Rose's dominance was offset by Shida's ability to evade and strike. She avoided Rose's punishing offence and relied heavily on what brought her to the dance. Her striking offence and trusty kendo stick, the action here was great and the brawl into the stands was fun and showcased a Shida hell bent on taking the title. She wanted it more and she dealt the final blow with the very kendo stick Rose used against her in a vicious sneak attack. But again guys, what a great match. And it all came to the AEW World Heavyweight Championship match, John Moxley versus Brody Lee. And this, Moxley defeated Lee, and this was a 4 out of 5 match. This was Moxley's best pay-per-view to date. Pay-per-view match to date, a balls to the war brawl that was appropriately brutal and intense. Moxley may have won, narrowly escaping defeat, but Lee looked like a total badass as he fought through everything thrown at him. Unlike Archer's loss earlier in the night, Lee was disputable. He never quit. The referee made the call to protect the wrestler when his body gave out on him. His booking in this match will help him build a connection with audiences more than any rapid push Vince McMahon mockery or Dark Order angle ever could. And again, guys, you know, what a talent John Huber was. And uh, this, this, these are the, these are the exam, the perfect examples why Brody Lee Luke Harper, John Huber was just fantastic talent and WWE wasted, wasted the potential that he could have gave WWE and he would have been a fantastic world champion at World Wrestling Entertainment but Vince McMahon just failed to book him. Oh, just absolutely shocking. But this, this, oh, double or nothing, John Moxley versus Brody Lee is a perfect example why he is such a great talent. And you know what, guys? R rest in peace to Brody Lee. And uh, his career cut short. He was such a good guy as well. And um, he had so much potential for AW. And I think, I think if given the opportunity and if he if he had that opportunity he would have been a fantastic he would have been a fantastic world champion shadow of a doubt and again guys what a pay per view that was and then we head over to full gear oh sorry guys we head over to out Full gear. So what, we start off with full gear. Yeah, well, all out was the next pay per view. Doesn't matter. But yeah, November seventh, and we had full gear.
we had Orange Cassidy versus John Silver and Orange Cassidy defeats John Silver we also had Darby Allen versus Cody Rhodes and it was Darby Allen who defeats Cody Rhodes for the AEW TNT Championship We had Hikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose and it was Hikaru Shida who defeats Nyla Rose for the AEW Women's World Championship. And again, Hikaru Shida performed a suplex on Hikaru Shida and it was one of the most exciting things I've ever seen her do in AEW. But she went on to deliver two more Falcon Arrows throughout the match and could barely lift Rose. Again guys, another great match. And we also had the Young Bucks versus FTR and this again guys was another fantastic match and it it's on the cards for one of the best matches of 2020 for All Elite Wrestling and again guys it was And it was the Young Bucks who defeated FTR for the Tag Team AEW World Championships. And again guys, we had Matt Hardy defeating Samuel Guevara. We had MJF defeating Chris Jericho. We had Kenny Omega defeating Hangman Adam Page. And Serena Deeb, who defeated Alison K by submission. So Serena Deeb defeats Alison K for the NWA World Women's Championship. We had Kenny Omega defeating Hangman Page in the AEW Championship Eliminator Tournament final match. And he went on to face. John Moxley for the AEW World Championship match. Darby Allen defeats Cody Rhodes for the AEW TNT Championship. Matt Hardy defeats, defeats Sammy Guevara in the Elite Deletion match. MJF defeats Chris Jericho. And John Moxley defeated Eni Kingston in an I Quit match for the AEW world championship and again guys another great pay-per-view i've had to quickly run down this one because my throat's cutting off here it's hurting the results for all out
we had Joey Janela versus Serpentico. And again, guys, this match was won by Janela, and Janela defeated Serpentico, and this match was a grade C match, and I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. The work here was solid, if, no, if nothing else, and set up a potential tag team rivalry, pitting Janela and Chris against Luther and Serpentico. There was not much of a story to play off, but the participants did the best with the time they had and the result was an enjoyable sprint of a match if nothing else then we had the buy in private party versus Alexa Reynolds and John Silver and this was a 3.5 out of 5 we had private party who defeated Silver and Reynolds this was rushed because of the time constraints the two teams still managed to deliver an energetic match that spotlighted Reynolds and Silver while showcasing the resilience of the babyfaces. The one complaint, the Dark Order losing here when it is building momentum for the rest of the group with every passing dynamite. Would it really have hurt Private Party to drop this one? I think it would have benefited if Dark Order have won, had have won this match. Then we have Tooth and Nail match. Big Swole versus Dr. Britt Baker and DM. And this was again was a, I'm gonna give this a minus a minus grade. Um It should be a lower than three, but I'm gonna give this a three out of five. There was some fun and inventive stuff here, but for the most part it was messy, really messy. It was also rushed, though a longer match probably would have have been for the worse. Then we had Jurassic Express versus the Young Bucks. And this was a four a four out of five. No, a four yeah, a four out of five match. The Young Bucks defeated Jurassic Express. This was a match of two stories told expertly by the men involved. First was the aggression, frustration, and downright cold heartedness of the books. They were not the fun loving cocky and engaging stars we have come to and know and love then we had the casino battle royale and again guys this was Archer who won here and this was a 4 out of 5 there was some solid storytelling throughout, including the latest chapter in the never-ending rivalry between Alan and Team Taz, as well as the showdown between Cage and Archer. But this was still suffered from the same, from some of the same tropes that plague battle royales. The body bag spot was tough to watch and probably tougher to take, while Jake Roberts, using Kingston's fear of snakes against him, late was a clever twist. Then we have the Broken Rules match, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. And again, I'm going to give this uh, a 4 out of 5, and Hardy, Matt Hardy defeated Guevara. The handling of this is going to be polarising because of the well-being of Hardy, who AEW CEO Tony Khan said passed concussion protocol after the match, but went to a local hospital for precautionary reasons it is clear there was some sort of audible call in between Edwards waving the match off and the competitors returning to the arena and going right into the finish people will question whether Hardy should have been permitted to climb the stage scaffolding but the finish at least gave the feud the draw dropping end it deserved and helped get AEW out of the corner it had booked itself into by announcing Hardy would leave if he lost 
Then we had the AEW Women's Championship match, Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Rosa. And it was Shida who defeated Thunder Rosa, and I'll give this a 4 out of 5. Then we have Matt Cardona versus Scorpio Sky and Creddy. And again, this was a, a, f a 3 out of 5 match. And it was Cardona Sky versus Cardona Sky, Marshall, and Rhodes who defeated the Dark Order. Then we had the AEW Tag Team Championship match Hangman Page and Kenny Omega versus FTR. And it was FTR who defeated Page and Omega to win the titles. And this was a 3.5 out of 5. Every so often there is a match fans and critics alike expect to be extraordinary to the point that management and wrestlers alike go out of their way to try and build an epic those matches almost never lived to the hype and this was one no different then we go on to Mimosa Mayhem match Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho and it was Orange Cassidy who defeated Jericho and this was a 3.5 out of 5 this was okay, Cassidy and Jericho had better matches against each other on Dynamite including the one in which Cassidy got over the proverbial hump by defeating the champion the, that probably should have ended the feud but since it did not this was a suitable conclusion to the programme the teasers were done well the Cassidy firing up finally woke the crowd up and they popped for the finish then we had the AEW World Championship match John Moxley versus MJF and it was Moxley who defeated MJF and I'm going to give this a bad score because I didn't, I didn't like this match. And uh, this was a 3 out of 5. This worked in some spots such as MJF targeting the arm in hopes of applying the salt of the earth and not in others. It was too long, lacked a sense of urgency and featured unnecessary blood. Furthermore, Moxley had to go against the rules of the match to beat a guy that had been portrayed repeatedly as a cheater himself. And here... Uh, that's it for the pay-per-views but we also had two other bonus events and it went on here yeah, the winter is coming I've also reviewed this one as a pay-per-view on my channel and uh, I'm not going to go into it we had the introduction of Sting debuting and again guys this was fantastic and if you haven't watched the winter is coming then go over and you will catch all elite wrestling and there is probably a show that was guys I'll, I'll give that a four a four out of five it was absolutely fantastic the show was immense So guys, we had the AEW World Championship match, John Moxley versus Kenny Omega. We had Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen versus Will Hobbs and Rick Starks. Frankie Kazarian versus Chris Jericho. Dr. Britt Baker versus versus Leela Hirsch. And Dynamite Diamond Battle Royale. And it was MJF and Cassidy were the co-winners of the Battle Royale. Frankie Gazarian versus Chris Jericho. It was Jericho who defeated Gazarian. Then we had Britt Baker versus Layla Hirsch. And it was Baker who defeated Hirsch. Then we had Cody Rhodes and Dobby Allen versus Rick Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. And it was Rhodes and Dobby Allen who defeated Team Taz. And that was again, that was a grade B match, and that was a full out of a 4 out of 5 match there guys and then we had the AEW World Championship match John Moxley versus Kenny Omega and again guys what a match that was and it was Omega who defeated Moxley to win the title 
and also guys we had the debut of Sting on the night as well an absolutely fantastic show And then we head over to the, I'd say the last pay-per-view of the year, which was the Brody Lee Tribute Show. again guys I'm not going to rate this one as this was just this this show was just for the just for the show to tribute it was a tribute show for Brody Lee and it was a celebration of his life and he was born 1979 and he died this year 2020 and this was just a, a celebration of his life. And uh, we had the Le Champion Chris Jericho on the commentary box. We had the Inner Circle versus Hangman Page, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds. We had Eddie Kingston, The Butcher, and The Blade versus Lance Archer, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson. We had the Young Bucks and Colt Cabana versus Matt Hardy and Private Party. We had Cody Rhodes, Orange Cassidy and Dark Order, Orders 10 versus Team Taz. We had Anna Jay and Tay Conte versus Dr. Britt Baker and Penelope Ford. And that is that show, guys. And it, again, it was absolute fantastic show to, re to celebrate his life. And uh, again, guys, we will do a tribute on here. And... Rest in peace to the to a great talent, and uh, I believe WWE wasted him over the years, and he could have they could have booked him a lot better. But when he went over to AEW, he was fantastic in AEW. His time was cut short, and I think he he had a lot more to give. It was taken from us. He was taken from us too quickly, and um, but he's in a better place now. And uh, we send our condolences to his family, his friends, and uh, his sons. And again, guys, that is the show. But again, guys, if you love what we do on this channel. And this was the AEW All Elite Wrestling 2020 Year in Review. And if you love what we do on this channel, then please support our channel. We're on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. And you can catch us on Instagram at the Geeky Collections. You can catch us on Twitter at rgeek3000. You can catch us on YouTube on Review Geek 3000 and you can contact us on all them social media guys and we will get back to you and we will talk alongside with you again guys um, you can subscribe to us on all of those social media accounts and we have a schedule we do a Monday and we do a Raw and Smackdown review on the Contenders Corner we also do these little bonus reviews as well and stuff like this we're going to do obviously in the months to come and here uh, we do Raw and Smackdown review we do pay-per-view reviews for WWE we do AEW Dynamite plus their pay-per-views and again guys we do film parade every week and we drew, we put a film in the hat we pick a we pick a film out the hat and we do a review on the spot also guys we also do a monthly unboxing on this channel and that contrives of Zanini Box 
loot crate, Z box, click rates, walking dead spell drop, and more. Anything geeky, guys, we unbox it on this channel. We also do a game stream every day on this channel. We haven't in the past, obviously, because of we've had to take a break. We've had to take in a break because of the Christmas period, and also we took a break, obviously, for the shocking events these past couple of days as I've had to mourn my pet and uh, it actually upset me because I was close to my pet but obviously she's in a better place now rest in peace and uh, we're back on YouTube to bring more content <laughs> But again, guys, we're going to get more content on here <laughs> in the coming weeks. We've got another Contenders Corner planned, and that is the top 10 AEW matches of 2020. And we're going to do the same again for WWE. The top 10 matches of 2020, and those two videos will be dropped at least either this week or next week. Probably, I'll probably do one each week. I'll probably do WWE this week and then AEW's next week. And we'll have that discussion on there. But again, guys, before we get that content on, get the discussion going. Get the ideas flowing here. What are your thoughts on WWE's top 10 matches over 2020, the past year? Also, guys, what are your thoughts on? AEW's top 10 matches of 2020 get that discussion flowing guys get the energy buzzing here and we will drop our thoughts in the coming videos that are next to follow but anyway guys we'll catch you on the next video and this is Review Geek 3000 calling out <laughs>